Welcome back to Essen 2017. We're here with, I'm going to probably say this sort of right, Yamaha. Did I get it right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you did. And Hi. interestingly enough, his name is spelled H-J something something. H-J-A-L-M-A-R. Yes, but it's Yalma, as I've just learned. Um, now, if you don't know him, he's a new designer, but he has two games out this year, and I think they're two of the best games that I've seen. One is Photosynthesis, and the other is Dragon Castle. So... What's it like? I mean, you're doing these new abstract games, but just amazing level abstract games. Yeah, I I don't know because you you know the the, the process is is like you you do a game, and then actually uh, it comes out years later, right? So you you are already uh, yeah thinking about the next things that are in line. But uh, yeah, I'm obviously super happy about how the, the, the games were received. And I think a lot of it comes also from the graphical presentation, which, which is really high level. I, I think it's like a good combination. And yeah, and, and yeah. So. Yeah, well, I mean, photosynthesis is just, right now it's, it's in my top five of the year. And the idea of, the trees blocking each other out with the sun. I mean, where did you come up with this idea? That was actually my first game. I, I was uh, studying a classical composition, so musical music. music. And uh, I started doing games with photosynthesis because I, I learned about a, uh, this world of games and people just making crazy things. And I was really inspired and it was a long time, I, I think I was 16 when I wanted to create an abstract game, uh, I mean uh, uh, with complete information, but I failed at that time and so then I forgot about doing games, like many children do when they then start doing others, other things. And, and so this passion came out again and uh, I, I had the, the possibility to, to, with all the, like the, in the uh, how do you say, the tools that the studies gave me, and like also growing up, you, you, you kind of build up tools in your head to do stuff. And I think it was, uh, yeah, there it came from, from like this tension to create um, an abstract game. And I had this idea of shadow and light and I, I built everything around it. It was very hard, I must say, because it was my first game and I had no reference for that mechanic. So, yes. Well, it's interesting. I mean, your first game and you knocked it out of the park with this one. Um, you also obviously have, very different than most abstract games, you have a, I guess, a Euro style going on where you're collecting the sun points and using action points for this. So you kind of, combine the Euro and Abstract all together. Yes, it, uh, I did, it, but without noticing, you know? It, it's just like, uh, it, came, it, it came to be like that, because the things were, like everything calls for another thing, that calls for another thing, that's like you see that things are interrelated, right? Like the height, uh, a lot of stuff is concentrated into the concept of height of a tree, right? Like. The height determines how the shadow goes, where you can put your trees, right? And also how near you are to getting those points. So it's like a, a thing of compression. So in a single concept, you put a lot of, of, of stuff and theme helps a lot with it because um, yeah, it, 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 like, it makes you feel as if the rules are legit. Okay, you understand what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like, when I play it, I really feel like my trees are trying to grow around other trees, and it usually in an abstract you don't feel the theme, but in this one you really feel the theme, like I'm blocking the sunlight, you're not getting anything, and you're not going to grow, and you really put that theme in well. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it was, I mean, it was a lot of work, because uh, one of the biggest problems is that it is an exponential uh, model, right? One tree 
gets you light, but then with that light you create two trees that give you more light, so you can create four trees which give you more light. And like I, I discovered you don't want exponentials in your games because they are like they go out of control and, and very fast obviously. And so uh, I had to search very much to find a system like um, to, to constrain this, uh, this growth and um, I hadn't uh, yeah and so uh, I had a lot of models like I had one where trees were growing alone so you could not decide if they had to grow or not and and actually the goal of the game was to have the most trees on the board at the same moment because they just went growing 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 and then dying so you wanted to stay in shadow <laughs> and it was it was a, va a bad variant but I mean I, I really tried so many things to find the, the, the right spot and then also through blue orange they they made uh, another step uh, going simplifying the game so like the what now is the, abs the the advanced variant was actually how you played the game okay it, it was like uh, simplified for giving it more of a family feel it, because obviously I, I wanted the game to be really competitive and not like some you know so yeah it's, it was a great experience no it's wonderful and now let's talk about your new game that's just out Dragon Castle um, it's interesting because Horrible Games you did Potion Explosion, which kind of has a Candy Crush feel. Now you've done Dragon Castle, which has a video Mahjong feel. It, did you kind of use the video game idea first to build this? No, actually, uh, first I have to say I, I'm now working for Horrible Games as a designer, uh, an internal designer. And uh, so I am like coupling with Lorenzo Silva who is a uh, designer of Potion Explosion and we we are creating these games together so sh so it's uh, like a community a, a, a collaborative uh, effort and uh, the yeah I think he is really into uh, creating like video game transpositions because I mean it's it's obviously you you get hooked to something you you know right and, and that's what happens with Mahjong. You, you see it and you already know kind of how, how to play it, right? Which, which is some, somehow it's, it's also a way to make, to make the rules make sense. You know what I mean? Because like Mahjong doesn't have that much theme, but you, you see it and you know how to play it, which, which is a little bit like with theme. And uh, yeah, I think, I think this game, uh, I, I, what I really about, like about the, this game is like the enormous possibilities to change the rules of the game by combining the dragons and the animals and and like the layouts of the castle it, it like seems a like a evolving figure an evolving game I, I i like that a lot and i hope you you also did i mean uh, the, the gameplay is really like flowing i i like it i think it was a great job yeah, I did as well, and the fact that every game will change based on the scoring and what kind of special power you could use to trigger different things in the game. Now, when you made when you made the game, obviously, I'm guessing that you worked on the part where you're bringing the Majan tiles back onto the board and and building out your little, I guess, your own personal castle. I guess we'd call it. Yes, that 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 was uh, that was uh, the like. The really important part is not to, to, I mean, interaction comes from taking the tiles, right? Because depending on my needs, I, I could take away something that you need. So there is the interaction and actually it's pretty interactive, this game. I, I like interaction a lot because it's, it's refreshing when you play, right? And then there is this, this like solitaire part where you build your, your little castle, right? And I love the fact that there is a, an element of push your luck. We, we, we really put, I think, a lot into that puzzle that you're solving because you, have, you want to build big, but you also want to big, build high. And, and, and the tiles that you don't need stay in the middle and then like uh, block you from doing the shapes you want to do. And this, this puzzle evolves. Also, I love the push your luck of building big because you know uh, you know that you you like um, have to connect the things with the last piece to to like make the chain, 
and uh, if you try to build too much of it, a, a set that is too big, maybe you just need one stone and the other player is going to take it away from you and, and so you pushed too much. Uh, I like that. Uh, I like that element. There is a lot of tension in this game. I think. Uh. Yeah, I found the same thing. Like every time I wanted to get sets of eight, and I would build like three here, three here, and try to get two in the middle. Eventually, while Tom would build like these big tall stacks and be capping everything, and we had very different play styles, but the scores were very close. I noticed. Yeah, we we had a lot of work on the balance balancing. So we also have two two ways to break ties because it's so the, the scores are so close that it uh, it's really like you you can have ties if you play with people that play uh, the same level as you you really can like uh, have uh, ties right uh, but i think it's it's a good thing of this game that you are so close you're really working to have that little point over your your enemy and only if you play at the same level obviously but, yeah, we, we, our second game we played of it, we had three people and we all tied. So it was very interesting to have such close scores. And the first game I beat Tom by one. Yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not that all the games are like that. And it's, it depends on the dragons you're using. It depends on your play style, on your, like, uh, uh, competitors. But uh, I think we really succeeded in, in, in creating a system that pushes you to, to the limit at like it's, I, th I think it's. Yeah. No, I think you did very well with it. So, do you have other games in the abstract style that you're working on, or are you planning to do other types of games, or mostly abstract? And what do you have planned next? So I I can talk only about some of the games that are coming next year, and one is with Culmini or not, and it's the um, board game of Kickass, the comic. So it's American style board game with some Euro style management. And I think you, you that, that's a pretty neat idea because we, we had this comic and we needed to, to, ex, to take the, like the soul out of it, right? The, the main concept. The main concept is these are children. They are like uh, human beings. They are not superheroes. So the game works like, like you have to plan out your day and you have to balance between your normal life like I, I have a girlfriend I want to stay with her and then I have to go to school and then you go also fighting like uh, mafia bosses and uh, and so I think this this uh, and it's it, it creates really funny stories because uh, it follows very well the lines of the comic book and uh, also we we like have no the you know the problem of the leader in in, um, in cooperative games, there is someone that's saying, uh, "Yeah, we should do that, that, and that." But in this game, you're the only one who knows what your character needs, what's best for your character. And so you would have like people saying, "Sorry, today I cannot come and fight the evil guys with you because I have to go to work." And I think it's it's really funny. Mm, uh, yeah. And then uh, other projects that will come. I have another project with Kulmini that I cannot talk about. Um, I'm working on um, a legacy game of a type that will, is different from the what we already saw. It will be really interesting. And uh, I'm working on a game that I can talk about this game that's coming out also next year. Uh, it's a platform game, so family weight, uh, dice management and rolling uh, game based on platformers, the, 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 like yeah, the games, the video games, and you build your level with the cards. So you, you really then can see the, the level, you're, you're like a level of a video game. Yeah. And it's modular, and you can build it up, and then you run it with your friends, and you try. It's like a, a run. You want to, to to arrive first, but the, the very cool part is you can build your own levels, and and run them. And then I have a also next year a party game. It no, not a party game. It's a game that you can play with like endless amount of people, uh, but it's not a party game. 
Really? I'm very intrigued about a lot of these. I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, based on your first two games, I, I, I'm imagining a lot of success in your future. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just don't want to like have this fear of, uh, like I ha only have to publish things that are at the level of photosynthesis. I, I think I'm going to do just my best, trying to, to, to follow what's coming next. And and without the fear of, of like failing something, I think everyone fails. Uh, so I, I will just continue doing games. No, well we're we're looking forward to playing more of them. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, thank you too. Bye. And uh, once again, Yelma, uh, I'm I'm learning how to how to speak. Uh, what language is it? That name is uh, Scandinavian from the Nordian, northern uh, mythology. I'm learning how to speak Norse as we as we learn here. And uh, this was another Essence Bill interview from the Dice Tower. We look forward to seeing you soon.